Hey church, what is up? Um, man, I miss you guys. Can I just say that? Uh, Jen and I are going through withdrawal and <laughs> not seeing uh, people in our community that we normally get to. I was on vacation last week with my kids. I had actually planned to take the week off and so I did, which was good. But the whole time I was kind of itching to go, okay, God, like I also want to be uh, back uh, working. And, and one of the first thoughts I had was I'd love to send out kind of just a message either on a daily basis or a couple times a week um, just to you to um, continue to connect together as a community, um, but also just to share my heart with you in terms of um, the things that I'm praying about and thinking about the things that God is impressing on my heart. And what does it mean, I think, all the way through this, we're asking this question, how do we respond as individuals and as a faith community in a season like this? Where do our thoughts go? Where do our hearts go? What do our hands and feet do in, in a time like this? And so I wanna just kinda of continually sort of share stuff over the weeks uh, uh, as we go through this, however long this is gonna be. Um, you know, one of the things I've been thinking about um, and the questions is like, where is God in this? And we're praying for God to heal and to move. And <clears throat> um, people ask questions. People have been asking questions since the beginning of time. Did God cause this? Is God judging the world through this? And uh, you know, my sense is that that's not, that's not what this is. Um, I don't think this, uh, what's going on is a result of God judging the world for sin in the world. It's simply because there's always sin in the world. <laughs> we, we are broken people and we live in a broken world. And so God is merciful to us all the time. I was actually thinking, it made me think one, one thing, first of all, is just like, God, this actually reminds me of how merciful God is. Like, think about it. This was not, you know, if you think about something like 9-11, which affected, um, you know, several thousand people and, and a few people in countries and set off obviously some war. Um, <clears throat> but that was the plans of, uh, you, know, you know, a well-orchestrated plan of several hundred uh, uh, people and thousands and thousands, probably millions of dollars to coordinate and over months and months of planning. And um, this thing was, you know, sort of an innocuous um, uh, thing that started with a few people in a rural area in China and one part of the world. And within a few weeks, the entire political and economic um, uh, system of the world in every country is on its knees going, we don't know what to do. And you think, man, if that can happen with nobody trying to do something evil, no one trying to... This could happen all the time. It is God's mercy to us that this doesn't happen all the time. And so for me, I don't think like judgment and God's, you know, for sin in the world. I think, God, you are so merciful all the time. It's incredible that this doesn't happen more often. But when I look back and look at it and think what, when I look at what it's doing in my own life and my family and the world around us, um, I think it actually makes me realize how I have so much confidence in trust and trust in something that is actually, you know, paper thin in terms of a foundation. Like how quickly all of our confidence in our financial system, in our political system, in our healthcare system, all of which we are blessed to have, um, can be punctured in a moment. And the whole world is going, we don't know what to do. And it just makes us realize, God, our confidence has always been and needs to be in you. This, we're always this fragile. We just don't, we're never aware of it. And so while God, I don't think God is manipulating us into trusting him more or anything through this, I think it certainly does and needs to actually make us all go, what do we trust in? How much confidence can we have in the world around us? And not in a way that sends us into panic. I think if you don't know God, that can send you into panic. But for us who realize, no, we know God is our rock, our foundation, our fortress, our, our deliverer, the one in whom we trust. All the things we sing about and say are true. We realize, man, in this season, it is true. And if everything else were to fall away, um, we have you. And so I think that's just an encouragement to you to not let your minds and hearts go to fear, but actually realize it's always been true. We are fragile. We are within a hair's breadth or one virus away from not knowing what to do or and to our whole world being set and uh, off kilter. And God is the one, the scriptures say, who holds us together. And so maybe you just need to realize and know in this moment, God is holding you together. He always has been. He was long before this virus came and he will continue to do that. I think the other thing that's coming to mind for me is um, the history of the church, you know, in 2000 years is in times of difficulty, stress, in times of plagues and viruses, in times of um, persecution, economic hardship, displacement, um, war, uh, the church 
uh, not only endured and, and, and had a role to minister to people who were hurting, but also became creative. And I think we need to be praying about and thinking about, God, what new things can happen in this season? Like, uh, you know, at a very sort of uh, individual level, like, Lord, what new habits and rhythms need to be cultivated in my life? Because a lot of my old habits and old rhythms have just been disrupted or removed. What new things do I need to be thinking about and praying about and instilling into my life um, in this season? Maybe for some of it's just like exercise and better eating and better rhythms of sleep um, that, so that we would emerge literally from this, you know, quarantine or whatever being locked down um, as more healthy people like mind, body, and spirit. Um, Lord, what new rhythms of prayer can I bring into my family and, um, you know, into my life and in the, whatever uh, your family unit looks like? And if you're a single person at home, like, okay, what new rhythms of connection do I need to build with people outside? What things, you know, how to, if you're an extrovert, you know, and you're being forced into introversion in a sense in one way, what new introverted habits do I need to develop in terms of reflection and meditation and journaling or whatever? If you're an introvert saying, hey, what, what new habits of like connecting with people who are really going to need that connection, like starving extroverts like me, you know, are going to need that, that time, that connection. But then what new things does God want to do around us? Um, new ways of doing work for those of you that are entrepreneurs, for those of you that are business people, for you, those of you that uh, run small businesses or have uh, uh, um, ownership over a certain area of industry or education or whatever, what new things can emerge from this? Like we're not limited by the system we're in. Our minds, we were built and made as creative people. Um, and then even like what new people and opportunities is God going to bring across our path? I just finished praying with uh, six of the guys who run a business in our building that we lease to, Torcan. And I just walked by them. They were all sitting there just kind of going, yeah, we're trying to figure out what to do. And I said, can I pray for you? And they were, they were like, yes, please. So I prayed for them. And there's new opportunities for you to pray with and for people, um, you know, over the phone or over FaceTime or whatever six feet apart, your neighbor across the street shouting prayers at each other. That'd be pretty fun to watch. Um, so be open to what new things God is bringing through this. Yes, we want to survive, but we also want to thrive. Yes, we need to, to deal with disaster and help those who are in need, but we also need to realize, wait, there's a, a, an opportunity for creativity that God can bring. Um, and as I said, I don't believe God is, is manipulating us through this and, and trying to, to do things to us. Um, but I know he is over all of it and he is holding us together within it. And as Romans 8.28 says, he is able to use all things, all things, even these things together to, to combine, to bring together, you know, things that we can't bring together. God can bring together things working for the good of those who love him and who are called, the called people. That's who we are together. So I just want to encourage you to continue to reflect on those things and pray about those things and saying, God, what new rhythms, what, what disruptions are were needed in my life? And now I need to lean into this in a new way. What new opportunities or new people are you going to bring across my path? Um, and how can I be creative and like you, God, in a season like this? And, and so that when we emerge, when we come out on the other side of this, we are coming out with new ideas, new thoughts. I'm, I'm hoping that by the time we're done, we have like a um, an online church platform that's that we use every week. I don't even know how what that's going to look like, but I, I just know. I know for some of my friends and whatever, like online church is a way they're going to, you know, checking out church in their underwear, so to speak. It's the way they're going to slowly kind of get uh, uh, connected with, with the, the community of faith and with God is through some of these online things. And so I'm hoping that by the other, uh, by the time we're done this, that we can actually have that as one of our service options. So, um, that's how I'm praying. That's how I'm thinking. I just encourage you to do the same. God bless. Stay tuned. Hope to send you many more of these things. Love you.